Hi everyone, in this video we'll talk about the RAS MAP kinase pathway. The MAP kinase pathway is initiated at the receptor level. The receptors which are responsible for the signal transduction are cell surface receptor known as receptor tyrosine kinase because they have an intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. The ligands for these receptors are mitogens or the growth factors. Upon ligand binding, the receptor tyrosine kinase dimerize. This dimerized receptor is now active and it phosphorylates the tyrosine residues in the cytoplasmic domain. Now, to this phosphorylated tyrosine residue, specific adapter proteins can dock, such as GRB2. GRB2 protein has SH2 domain, which recognizes phosphotyrosine residues. Now, GRB2 can further interact with SOS protein. SOS protein, otherwise named as son of 7 less, which was found in Drosophila, is actually a guanosine nucleotide exchange factor and it helps in GTP exchange. SOS actually helps RAS, which is a monomeric G protein, to exchange its GDP and replace it with GTP and thereby activating the RAS protein. If you are wondering that why these proteins have weird names like SOS, GRB2, then you should watch the video in i button. It talks about the discovery of SOS and the RAS MAP kinase signaling pathway. However, let's focus on this pathway for a while. RAS, once activated, now can dissociate and move in the membrane to interact with other kinases such as RAF. RAF gets activated upon interaction with RAS and in this moment, we should understand that the activation of RAS is not for an infinite time. There are molecules like GAP or GTP as activator protein which can hydrolyze the GTP and render the RAS into an inactive state. When RAS is not bound to GTP, RAF is no more interacting with RAS and the pathway would be eventually shut down. Anyway, when RAS is active, RAF is also active and it interacts with another downstream kinase known as MEC and it phosphorylates MEC, thus activating the MEC. MEC further activates and phosphorylates ARC. ARC is another kinase which then translocates into the nucleus and interacts with several transcription factors and RNA polymerase for and allow gene expression to happen. And this is how the downstream cascade in RAPS MAP kinase pathway takes place. Now let's talk about what are the genes which are transcribed by this pathway. The genes that are transcribed by RAS MAP kinase pathway are responsible for growth and cell division, such as cyclene T1. Also, genes which are responsible for survival, proliferation, such as CMEK, BCL2, BCLXL, all of the genes are the target genes for RAS MAP kinase pathway. From this gene expression profile, we can understand RAS MAP kinase pathway give rise to growth, division, and proliferation in, in terms of a tissue or a cell. So, overall, RAS MAP kinase pathway is very important for growing tissue or cells that are undergoing divisions. Now, let me tell you a little bit uh, details about this. So, one of the target gene of RAS MAP kinase pathway is actually cyclin D. Once cyclin D is produced, it interacts with its CDK partner, that is CDK4 or 6, and cyclin D eventually phosphorylates PRB protein. PRB, under normal circumstances, hold E2F protein, which is an important transcriptional modulator, and thereby preventing it to perform its transcriptional activity. But cyclin D phosphorylates PRB and allows the release of E2F. E2F now can freely bind to the specific gene region and lead to the transcription of genes responsible for the S cell 
S phase of the cell cycle. So overall, we understand how cyclin D production helps in the progression of cell cycle from G1 to S. And that kind of explains the growth activity of MAP kinase pathway. Now, let me tell you, in cancer, RAS MAP kinase pathway is perturbed. One of the common thing in cancer is the mutation in RAS oncogene. In the mutated RAS, the GTPase activator protein gap cannot hydrolyze the GTP. As a result, RAS is constitutively active regardless the presence of any mitogen because it's a mutation in RAS. As a result, the downstream effectors such as RAF, MAKE, ARC, all of them are active and the downstream of this pathway genes are actually transcribed. This is leading to uncontrolled proliferation which might lead to cancer. Now we understand how RAS MAP kinase pathway is responsible for cancer. Now let me tell you that when we think about RAS MAP kinase pathway, we always visualize the receptor tyrosine kinase to be the initiator of this pathway. But this pathway can be initiated by G protein coupled receptor as well, and that brings us with the essence of crosstalk between signaling pathways. There are certain proteins known as beta arestine which modulates the G protein coupled receptor pathway can binds to these GPCRs and recruit a kinase known as SRC kinase. SRC kinase can further phosphorylate ARC and we know ARC is downstream to MAP kinase pathway so obviously ARC can translocate into the nucleus and activate the genes which are responsible or which are important for this pathway which are important for growth survival or proliferation. Thereby, we can appreciate how different pathways can crosstalk at different levels. So with that, let me say that uh, if you would like to uh, support my channel, do it on Patreon. If you are an Indian viewer, you can support me on uh, GPay or let's say Veeam UPI app. Your uh, small contribution means a lot for me. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and my courses are also in Unacademy which is India's biggest online learning platform. In order to take my course, use my code AP3.